We're open here at Launchpad Golf, but we wanted to take you behind the scenes to give you an idea what it took to build these bar tops both downstairs and upstairs with our good friends over at the Black Forest Wood Company. Let's head over there to see them now. today at the Black Forest Wood Company, a project we've been working on at Launchpad for the last six months. Dylan, mm -hmm. thanks for being here and showing us a little bit around your uh, business today. Of course, Barry. Uh, thank you for coming down and thank you for choosing us for, for the project that we've completed for you guys too. It was probably one of the more unique projects we've ever completed. Yeah. Definitely one of the largest too. And we made these two stunning resin and buckeye burl bar tops for you new, your new launch pad location. And although we've been doing this for a while, I don't think a lot of people have seen something quite to the scale and beauty of what right. we did at your place. Totally agree. And like, so I guess a bit of background about Black Forest Wood Company. You know, we, we got our start in the custom solid wood doors and it's been about the past five to seven years that we've got into these more custom and unique types of resin furniture. Yeah. Um, so it started off small, it started with dining tables, coffee tables, and we got into the desks. But now we're to a point with you, Barry, that we're getting to do absolutely stunning projects. We're sharing them with everyone online. Yeah. Like I think some of the videos showing our reels, even just on Instagram, we're close to like a million combined views wow. already, and we yeah. haven't even put our, yeah. our main video out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my, my goal in this entire process is to do something truly spectacular. I'd follow you guys on all your social media platforms and I said, gosh, with both of us being local, yeah. how unique of something we can create. So let's go through that process today. Maybe we'll talk about the wood selection and yeah. through that entire production of what we actually created for Launchpad because it was a ton of fun for us. I know a lot of time, effort and energy for you, but maybe talk to us a little bit through, you know, that first meeting and, you know, kind of how, how we honed into what we were going to do. Yeah, so I, I guess it was about six months ago. I would say at least, right? Yeah, yeah. that I yeah. think you and your team came down right. and right in here, we yeah. brought you guys in and we started looking at some of our pieces of wood. And I know what immediately caught your eyes uh, was this Buckeye Burl yeah. over here. So if we, if we come take a look at our raw material, this of course is some of the most unique material in the whole shop, which is I think why you liked it so much. Right, exactly. And you just about selected all of our remaining <laughs> stock that we had and for these two bar tops like this is literally all we've got left now um sounds like we're gonna have to be getting more though because we've yeah. got more projects coming up I hope so soon yeah exactly so where does this come from and and tell us a little bit about how you get the unique um, pieces of wood in this kind of configuration so this is ohio buckeye burl okay. and all of our wood is we source it a little bit uh, in a little bit of an untraditional way, right. uh, as opposed to just going from your typical lumber suppliers, we're actually contacting a lot with the sawyers that are taking these trees and pieces okay. down, yeah. uh, either off of orchards or people's yards. So most of these Buckeye pieces are coming off orchards, and typically what happens is they cut them down because they've reached a point of maturity where they're not producing for them, yeah. and they usually chip them up and burn them and then plant all new ones. Yeah. In this case, we're fortunate enough to have the opportunity to help salvage pieces like this. Right. So we purchase a whole lot of burls. We have it sawed up at, uh, by our friends down at GL Veneer. Okay. They'll actually cut it into slabs for us. And it's about a three year drying process and seasoning process wow. to even get these pieces ready for us to be able to use. Wow. So after all that sawing, all that drying, they finally make their way here to us at our shop. And that's okay. where we look for clients like you Right. that can trust our vision yep. and want to see what we can create with something like this. So these remaining pieces that are here, just mm -hmm. so I'm clear, were th that tree was cut down at least three years ago. At least. At least. At least. Yeah. Takes, uh, it takes a long-term vision. Right. You know, when we're, when we're making the initial investment on this, we know that we're not going to see it for three to four years from now. Wow. But we just, we have to trust in ourselves and yep. trust in our clients that we're we're going to need this material. We know we're going to need it. And if we don't keep making investments like this, we don't have unique stuff for clients like you when you right. come in. Yeah, no, that's great. So that was the process we went through. We kind of, you know, 
did some imagineering or created a bit of a vision. So we actually selected the wood first. Mm -hmm. What is the process after that? I mean, obviously we had to create templates and whatnot, but maybe yeah. walk us through a little bit of what that process of getting it from this stage all the way to complete a stage looks like. So it obviously began, like you said, with the selection. And one thing that was nice uh, with this process too, Barry, you gave us a lot of creative freedom on yeah. this piece. which Wanted we, to. You guys are artists. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. You know, so Barry, you let us do exactly what we wanted to do. And pick, picking, I guess, is the easy part. Then that's where the work begins. So we, number one, I think we went there. There was still snow on the ground the oh. first time we did our site measure. It was like right in the dead of winter. It like was. Like January or something like that. Yeah, and we, we measured up those rough countertops. Um, we got our initial sizes, and then we had to come back to the shop. We, we physically drew all the countertop shapes out on the ground, laid in the burls that you've selected. We had to start cutting them down to size to actually get those to fit in the mold, uh, which we also had to be quite careful for because there was the LED component to this. Totally. Yeah. So it was a strategic layout for these pieces because we were trying to run these LED cables to be hidden beneath the burls. Yeah. So we need suitable pieces of burls to do that, but then also have an appropriate amount of spacing so that the entire bar still glows when it's finished. So why don't we actually go head up to the pour room and see how we turn these pieces of burl into this resin countertop. Yeah, let's do it. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. Right away when we head in, we've got our, our giant CNC machine, which we needed every inch of to do your pieces. Because right. yeah. they I think yours were like the one piece was almost like 20 feet long, the one straight section. Yeah, so this is our 20 foot by six foot CNC machine, and we essentially use this to just flatten yeah. large pieces. It's a cutting machine, essentially. It, it's a cutting machine, right. exactly. Okay. And Here's actually a piece on the CNC machine that was partially insp inspired by Barry's job. These clients saw the bar top we created for Barry and they love the Buckeye Burl so much that they're, they're doing their own unique piece with it. Right. Um, really cool. Yeah. So that, that's the big CNC. We've got some guys over there shipping out some other products right now. There's our large thicknessing sander that we use to surface the pieces after they're off the CNC, but let's head upstairs to our pour room and see where the magic's happening. Let's go. So this is our, our oil finishing area, um, but behind these doors here is where we do all of the resin pours. We've got all your pouring happens back in this space. All of the pouring in here. Yeah. So we've got our aluminum cooled tables uh, with water cooling that also goes through everything to actually help keep these pieces cooled. Yeah. Um, because one, you know, we're, we're very well known for our resin designs, but one right. thing maybe not everyone realizes is that we actually kind of pioneered this whole style of furniture. Yeah. So when this style of furniture first came out and we were experimenting with this, there was no real set methods to successfully pull off these larger pores. Uh, the manufacturers had made a product that could, let's say, pour to two inches thick, sure. but not on, let's say, a 20-foot scale big for scale. a right. big scale. Yeah. So we actually had to, with no help, just through trial and error, design these systems that would allow us to pour these massive, massive tables. So tell me a little bit about that, because one thing clearly you can't tell from camera, from the minute we walked in here, mm -hmm. it's cooler in here. And you kind of mentioned the cooling process. We've talked about that a little bit in the past. Yeah. But it's one of the important things that takes place when you're actually making these pours, if I remember right. Hugely important. So our resin, when you mix the two components together and it starts to cure, it actually has an exothermic reaction, okay. meaning that it generates heat. So the heat that's generated by that chemical reaction also acts as a catalyst, meaning it will cause it to cure quicker. Okay. So the more heat there is, the quicker it cures, and then the more air bubbles you get trapped in. Right. Uh, in extreme cases, it can even crack and fracture. Wow. So heat is the enemy okay. when you're doing a resin pour. So we've constructed this whole room. It's insulated. We've even done spray foam insulation to get all of the, the heat staying outside of here that we can. Uh, and then that's where we've employed the aluminum cooled tables. We've got a big reservoir under there that can circulate our chillers. Okay. And 
we're the first people to ever employ anything like that in this kind of process. Yeah, and, and the actual pour process itself, obviously you've got something happening here right now, yeah. which I found a little bit unique. It's not a matter of just taking resin and pouring onto the product. This is a staged process. Like, tell us about, you know, often it takes more than one pour. Mm -hmm. And what about the cure time? Tell us about how long that takes. Yeah, so these, these tables, they have to sit for a week. You know, after we do a pour, basically this table's done for one week. And uh, like we're, we're usually mixing individually by the bucket. That's important so that we can also get a consistent color. We have to go in certain size batches, otherwise it can be too hard to replicate a color. Sure. So we first start by mixing each bucket for about 15 minutes, just with a mechanical mixer on a drill. Then it has to go over to a degassing chamber, those, those steel chambers on the ground, and that actually extracts all of the air out of the mixture. Okay. Because when we're using that Mixing that it. Yeah, you're yeah. adding air. Makes sense. Yeah. And if you don't pull that air out after your pour, it, it may look it looks good from far back, right. but it doesn't look very good when you get up close to it. Okay. So after degassing, then it goes in here, then we have to turn on all the cooling, crank up the ACs, and wait a week. And then even after that point, we've probably still got well in your job for something that big, there's still like another six weeks of building. You know, because we've yeah. got to go do another site measure, yeah. double check again, uh, line our templates up on top. I know we have to, to make sure that um, we had proper structure there to even right. support this top. Which is one of the, the, the hiccups that we had to reinforce our, our counter or our, our bar tops so that they would be supporting the weight of this. We did, and it's good we caught that before yeah. the bars actually went in because right. I think we went there for one of the site measures and we kind of noticed that when we were leaning on this, th there was some flex there. Yeah. So I think your construction crew, they went in and they installed some super heavy duty brackets for this. Yeah. But now we know for the next one too, right? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the last questions I'm gonna ask, or, or two things. Number one, once you actually pour it, mm -hmm. what does the process look like from this point all the way to finished um, project? Mm -hmm. And then number two, tell us a little bit about the weight. Like how, much, how, how heavy are these things? Because yeah. that was one thing that blew me away with, with our bar tops. Yeah, so from this point, after it's sat in here for a week, um, we take it down. Luckily, we don't have to use the stairs. We lift that gate out. We use our forklifts. We forklift them down. Then it's back onto the CNC machine for more flattening. Then we have to put it through our thickness sander to actually take out the machine marks from that CNC. Okay. Because if we're, to, if we're to try and just sand all those machine marks out by hand, you're sitting there for days and right. days and right. days. Yeah. yeah, so we pump it through the big sander. Then we go to hand sanding, and even with the help of the big sander, it's still many, many hours to get that perfect finish that we're looking for. And then we actually partnered up with another local company, Jekko Finishing, who we've been working with for, oh man, probably five or six years now. Yeah. They've been doing all of our spray finishes. Right. And they used uh, two component catalyzed urethane on the top of this bar top, really made those burls pop. And then the final coating that we added was our black pore ceramic. It's kind of similar like an automotive coating, yeah. right? right? So we put that on the bar tops just to kind of give them that slick feel uh, and hydrophobic look and feel to them too. Um, and then you, then you asked about the weight. So that's probably, besides the, te go ahead. No, I was just gonna say because I think our bar top alone, which is what I, you know, I kind of want to reference, do you remember how much that weighed? Because it, it kind of blew me away. I'm pretty sure it was over 2,000 pounds. Each one. Each one. Yes. Um, and that, besides the technical woodworking aspect, right. moving these is probably one of the hardest parts of the whole build. Every time we wanted to even just flip your bar top over to sand it, eight to ten guys. Wow. Right? So every flip, the whole shop shutting down, we're all going to flip this piece. And then there was the install. <laughs> that was a little scary. Yeah. Uh, we actually almost dropped one of the bars. I don't even know if you knew about this. <laughs> no, You're hearing about this for the first time. So yeah. we got it on video. Haley got it on video. But we, wow. we had rented these hand crank forklifts, oh, right? Yeah. Okay. So we had three of them. And hindsight's always 2020. We had all three of them parked in a line with the forks going out the same direction. So they're like this. Yeah. And we set the bar top uh, laying over them. And three guys were all cranking because right. we had to lift these up to get them over the railing yeah. to the upstairs bar. That's right. So we get them all cranked all the way up there, and since all of these forklifts are on one side, the bar starts sliding forward, Ooh. and there's nothing to catch it. Right. And it literally, I would say, was about two inches away from tipping over, 
one of our guys cranked down the middle forklift, rolled it over, flipped it around so we had some facing this way and some facing this way. Wow. We saved it. Wow. So my dad literally said he thought he was about to have a heart attack. <laughs> that was brutal. I was sweating. I, was I thought that was going to fall for a second. I was yeah. actually sweating. <laughs> Um, I think we were all feeling that way, but right. we pulled it off. But it's yeah. it can be scary sometimes, yeah. you know. But that's all part of these these super customized processes, right? Like, Absolutely. You know, even this you said I believe a minute ago, from this point until finished product for our project was about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. It, so it, was. it definitely takes some time. Yeah. And there there's a whole crew of guys working on it too, right? Like we, we employ I think our full time manufacturing staff. There's seven people back there. Yeah that all have kind of their own little niche and unique specialty that, that makes these things come to life, right? Absolutely. We actually have some great B-roll we're now gonna show you on that delivery and what the finished product that Black Forestwood Company did for us at launch. the completed bar top at launch pad this one downstairs and the one upstairs our friends over at black forest wood company are actually going to do a far more in-depth video so i'm going to add that in the video description below and i really hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the creative process in making a bar top like this if you're not subscribed to the channel please do so i really appreciate the support of course hit that notification bell that like button we'll see you next time